Next, could you talk to us about omega-3 fatty acids? Why are they important and what supplements do we need, if we need any at all? The thing about omega-3 fatty acids is they need to be in balance with omega-6 fatty acids. Um, and within the typical Western diet, we get a lot of omega-6 fatty acids within our diet because they come from grains, they come from um, meat, um, and they come from seed oils. So the typical Western diet is abundant in omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids to, tend to come from green leafy vegetables, fish, seafood, and some nuts, such as walnuts. Um, which is tends to be more typical to the Mediterranean diet. So uh, the reason that we may not necessarily get the benefit from um, omega-3 in a supplement form may be to do with the fact that if, the, again, going back to this point about confounding, um, the, the person's underlying diet may be really awash with omega-6 fatty acids. And really, we're supposed to have quite a balanced ratio of intake of both omega-3 and omega-6. Mm. You mentioned a balance between omega-3 and omega-6. Uh, and for some of us, this is all a bit mystifying. Can you just explain why the balance is important? So with omega-6 fatty acids, the typical Western diet is typically awash with them. They, they're in vegetable oils, nuts, seeds, grains, meat, eggs, and dairy products, which tend to be quite prolific throughout the typical Western diet. Omega-3 fatty acids, though, for example, they tend to be more prolific within the Mediterranean diet. They are found in green leafy vegetables, seaweed, some nuts and seeds, such as flax and walnut, and especially within fish and seafood. And when we take in these two types of fatty acids, the omega-6 and the omega-3, we are really supposed to take them in sort of roughly an equal ratio, but that tends not to be the case. And um, within humans, we can't make either omega-6 or omega-3 fatty acids. And also we can't convert either from omega-6 to omega-3, whereas plants can. Um, what we can do though, is we can metabolize both types of the, um, the shortest chain um, fatty acids into these longer chain fatty acids but we're not very efficient at that and uh, there is increasing amounts of research that show that it is better to get some of these longer chain um, polyunsaturated fatty acids directly from the diet so for example the EPA and the DHA directly come from fish and seafood. And what has this to do with inflammation? Could you just walk us through where nutrition meets pharmacology as it were? What's important for this and what was a bit of a light bulb moment for me as a pharmacist when I was studying this is that when we consider about how nutrition meets pharmacology, um, we will, a lot of us remember within our training, the arachidonic acid cascade and the omega-6 fatty acid, um, arachidonic acid, by the action of these two enzymes, cyclooxygenase and 5-lipoxygenase, create various different inflammatory mediators, such as prostaglandins of the two series, thromboxanes of the two series, and leukotrienes of the four series. And conversely to that, with omega-3 fatty acids, so if we look at the equivalent length chain to arachidonic acid, which is icosapentaenoic acid, EPA, when the same enzymes act on EPA, they create prostaglandins of the three series, thromboxanes of the four series, and leukotrienes of the five series. And those mediators tend to be less inflammatory or maybe even anti-inflammatory. So the balance of these substances within our diet can increase or decrease our propensity towards inflammation. A diet that's more rich in omega-3 fatty acids will be a much more anti-inflammatory diet, whereas a diet that's very rich in omega-6 fatty acids will be a more pro-inflammatory diet. And again, as pharmacists, where we should consider that this is relevant is when we think about where do medicines work, how do drugs work? So when we look at um, the cyclooxygenase 
enzyme. We have various medicines that interfere with that with the action of that enzyme in, in its creation of these substances, the prostaglandins, thromboxanes, and prostacyclins, such as aspirin, aspirin non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and COX inhibitors and steroids, they impact here, which are obviously we use as an anti-inflammatory type medicine. And likewise over here, leukotriene receptor antagonists, which again are used for inflammation in respiratory conditions. Um, that's where the medicines work. So there are, it, it is important for us to consider that what we eat can influence our propensity towards inflammation. And actually, if we get the balance better with omega-6 and omega-3 within our diet, we may create a less inflammatory state and we may reduce the need for some of these medicines. If you can reduce the inflammation in a person's body, they may reduce their symptoms and reduce the need for these medicines. Mm -hmm. So what advice should we be giving people who wish to increase the omega-3 content of their diets? The, simple, the simplest way is to consider explaining to people what a Mediterranean diet looks like and to explain that, you know, a diet that's high in fish and seafood, balanced with vegetables, taking the beige out of your diet, you know, taking all of the foods that come pre-packaged in the supermarket as beige coloured, trying to reduce those because they tend to be the ones that are high in seed oils and grains. Um and try and switching over to, you know, fish, seafood, vegetables, um, the way that you would eat if you were to go to any Mediterranean country that you'd expect to be served up lots of vegetables, fish and seafood. Um, trying to eat that way um, on a more regular basis. There, are, There is some research that shows that you can change the balance within your cells of omega-3 and omega-6 within a week of changing the way that you um you know, if you increase your omega-3 intake quite substantially, um, the, the structure of your cells can change within as quickly as a week. So um, it's really important to try and eat more of those foods that are high and rich in omega-3. And this is information that we've known for a very long time. You know, for a very long time, we've been telling people who've had a heart attack that they should eat more oily fish. Um, that's been standard um, advice pretty much for as long as I've been qualified as a pharmacist in the 90s. So, yeah, I think it's important to tell people to eat more, more vegetables, more fish and seafood, particularly oily fish like salmon or mackerel or sardines. 